It's now time to analyze the data. We'll be constructing a statistical model for each of the response variables. In this case, a model for mean strength and another model for the standard deviation. We will keep in mind the principle of parsimony, which says that the simpler we keep the models, the better they're likely to be. They'll be easier to estimate and they'll be likely to give better predictions. To start the analysis, I'll click on the button labeled Step 8 on the Wizards toolbar. This will bring up a dialog box on which I will specify how I wish to treat each of the response variables. There is a combo box under the word transformation where I can specify how I want to transform both the mean and the standard deviation. I can choose to fit a model for the data as is by doing no transformation or I could choose a square root or a logarithm or a reciprocal or a power if my data consisted of proportions, I might decide to do an arc sine square root. Or I could even have the program do a box Cox transformation, which will pick the best power for me automatically. In the case of the mean, I won't do any transformation since the numbers are relatively large and fairly stable. On the other hand, it's usually a good idea if you're building a model for the standard deviation to choose a logarithm. This will both stabilize the standard error of that estimated standard deviation and also keep you from getting negative results from your fitted models. I'll now press OK, at which point the program will begin to analyze both of the variables. In fact, it will create an analyze experiment window for mean strength and also for the standard deviation, which I can then explore. Let's start with the window for the standard deviation. Up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see something called a Pareto chart. A Pareto chart will draw bars, one for each main effect and interaction, showing the contribution of that effect to the overall variability of the response. The largest bar at the top here is corresponds to the AC interaction. That's the interaction between temperature and pressure. There are two other large bars, C for the main effect of pressure and A for the main effect of temperature. Together, all three of these effects are quite significant as indicated by the fact that they're blue. The rest of the effects, A, D, D, and so forth, are not statistically significant at the 5% level. Now remembering that we wish to have simple models, I can now click the right mouse button and select Analysis Options. This gives me a dialog box that I can use to exclude any insignificant effects. In this case, it looks like it's a good idea probably just to keep A, C, and A, C so I'll double click on every other term, move it to the right hand side, which will indicate to the program I wish to exclude those factors. Once I get it down to the three significant effects, I'll click OK and the program will refit using only those effects. Now, to see what the underlying mathematical model is, we have a number of different graphs. If I double click to put this back and then double click again, you'll see a main effects plot showing what happens as I change each one of the effects. The way you read this is that the line is showing you how the mean of the log of the standard deviation of strength changes as you change the factor each one of the factors from its low level to its high level. Notice the positive slope on the line for temperature. That implies as temperature has changed from its low level to its high level that the standard deviation, or in this case the log of the standard deviation, will go up. Meaning I get low standard deviations at low temperature. 
Time is no longer in the model, so it's no longer estimated to have any effect. Pressure, on the other hand, has a negative slope, implying the standard deviation will go down as I increase the pressure. I've also removed material from the model since it was not significant, which implies that the standard deviation really is about the same for all three of the materials. Since there was an interaction between temperature and pressure, it's probably also a good idea to do an interaction plot. I could do an interaction plot by going to the analysis toolbar and pressing the tables and graphs button. The third plot that's offered me is the interaction plot. I'm going to press OK and then double click on the new plot, which is rather complicated at the moment. However, if I press the right mouse button, go to pane options, I can ask just for the two significant factors, which are temperature and pressure, which will give me a much more interesting plot. In fact, there appears to be a very strong interaction here. I said before that it appeared okay, that um, increasing the temperature increased the standard deviation. Well, that's quite true at high pressure. Notice the steep line for pressure equals 175, but not so true for low pressure. In fact, it looks like at a pressure of 125, increasing the temperature might uh, actually reduce the standard deviation. Or you can look at it another way. At high temperature, there really isn't much difference amongst the different pressure levels. However, at low temperature, it seems that keeping the pressure high gives you a small standard deviation. Another interesting plot to look at, if I push that tables and graphs button again, would be a surface plot. A surface plot will show you, through the height of a surface, how the response changes as you vary any two of the factors. Now, to see the two most interesting factors, I'm going to right click and choose pane options. Then press the factors button and choose just temperature and pressure. I'm also going to go back to the previous dialog box and ask for a solid surface rather than a wire frame surface. And now you see a fairly interesting plot which I'll rotate using the slider bar on the right. This illustrates a very strong interaction. Actually, the twist in the plane uh, illustrates that interaction. In the back, where pressure is high, notice that temperature has quite a significant impact on the standard deviation, while in the front, it isn't nearly as significant. Lowest standard deviations appear to be in the back left corner, which is low temperature, high pressure. Now, at the same time, after I've looked at the graphs, I can have the program numerically optimize the response for me. I'll do that by pushing the Tables button, and at the bottom of the Tables button, you'll see an option called Optimization. Now, double-clicking in the bottom left, I can see that the program has automatically figured out for me what the optimum combination of the factors is. It says actually that I could reach a log standard deviation of about 1.1 if I set the temperature at 140 degrees, time at 6, pressure at 175, and used material C. That is the optimal spot within the experimental region, which in this case minimizes the log of the standard deviation. I'm now going to do a similar analysis for mean strength. The first thing I'll do is I'll go over to the navigation bar and click on the window for mean strength. Double-clicking on the Pareto chart, you can see now four blue bars indicating four significant effects. They're the main effect of time, the main effect of temperature, the main effect of material. An interaction between A and C that's temperature and pressure. The terms below that, starting with BB, which incidentally refers to times squared, and the other bars, pressure and so forth, are not statistically significant. 
Again, simplifying the model, I'll push the right mouse button, go to Analysis Options, and now start taking out insignificant effects. My general rule is as follows. I will take out any high order effect, in this case second order effect, that's not statistically significant. Basically, the only high order effect I'm going to leave in this case is going to be AC. I'll also take out any insignificant main effect if it's not involved in a significant higher order effect. Now C, pressure, is not statistically significant. However, it is involved in a significant interaction, the AC interaction. That means that it's really not a good idea to remove C. Doing so would put a fairly strange restriction on the underlying mathematical model that I don't want to do. So although C is not statistically significant, it's going to stay in my model. I'll now press OK which will show me the effects of the different factors. Again, to view the effects, it's interesting to look at the interaction plots. The interesting interaction plot here again is a C. And if I use pane options to limit myself to A and C, you'll see also a fairly significant interaction between pressure and temperature. In this case, I'm looking at the mean, of course, which means that what I want to do is maximize the response. Well, I achieve high response, high mean response, I guess, at high temperature and low pressure. Now, unfortunately, that's not the same thing that gave me the best standard deviation. And we'll have to talk in the next video about how we resolve this dilemma sometimes when the optimal conditions for one response are not the same as for another. I will, however, go to the Tables and Graphs button and ask the program to optimize the mean. And remember, in this case, it was trying to hit a value as close to 250 as possible, which it found that it could if it used basically a high temperature a high time, and a sort of a medium value of pressure. It also decided that material B was the best for the mean, although you may remember it was a different material that it chose to optimize the standard deviation.